Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In recent videos I've featured the Orion Carrier Plane, testing out its capabilities and checking out what possible flaws there might be. And it is a wonderful first stage, the ultimate first stage perhaps, and I would like to put it to further use. But we have some other questions to answer. First of all, since it lands at Cape Canaveral, how does it get back to its launch site? Unlike the SpaceX designs, which land at their launch site, they do a return to launch site, or of course they could land on a drone ship and get tugged back like that, uh, but this does not. This lands downrange and needs to get back somehow. It could be put on a ship and shipped back, or it could fly back, but we do have to test its capability to fly back. And this poses a few problems. It originally was fitted with jet engines, uh, specifically actually the uh, semi-ramjet engines from the SR-71, and I had fitted them on and put some extra kerosene in the body, uh, which substitutes for jet fuel or whatever the heck the fuel. It's a peculiar fuel that the SR-71 engines use. We do have some room in the body for spare fuel if we want it. Uh, so if we wanted a kerosene tank, there is room because actually the tank in this uh, takes up about this area. If you uh, take a look at the available volume, there's plenty of available volume left, 370 uh, kiloliters out of 1.66 million liters. And so that actually represents the cockpit area and the forward nose area that we're leaving unfilled. But the thing about putting kerosene in is, of course, when we're, if we want to keep the jet engines on and make sure it's immediately ready, we'll at least have to have an empty kerosene tank in there, if not one that's, you know, having some fuel so that it can potentially fix its trajectory to Cape Canaveral if I do something wrong. So that's inconvenient though, having a separate kerosene tank, and maybe we want the cockpit area to remain available just in case we want pilots to fly it back instead of it being automated on the flight back from Cape Canaveral to Brownsville. So there are all these considerations. And so I looked up the web and I wanted to find if there had been a methane burning jet engine. And there has been, as it turns out. Uh, it is the NK89 LNG turbofan. And so this was uh, tested actually uh, by the Soviet Union in 1989. It was tested on a TU-155 and that had actually a bunch of uh, tests. It was meant for, it was a test bed. Uh, so it actually, they t tested a hydrogen jet engine too. But uh, for our purposes here, since we don't use hydrogen here, we use methane on this plane, uh, we would like a methane burning jet engine. And so this NK89 is this methane burning jet engine. And we have the st some stats for it. We have the maximum thrust, we have the specific fuel consumption, and a fair estimate on its mass. This is not a turbofan model, but it'd probably be a low bypass turbofan anyway, because it's 1989. It's not like the turbofans that we have today. So yeah, it, it would probably need a slightly bigger body perhaps, but this is uh, good enough. So it gets 103 kilo, kilonewtons of thrust maximum, and the question is whether that's going to be good enough. It is a realish engine that was actually tested, so we're in legit territory here. And the question is whether we can take off. <laughs> I know it can take off, but that was with the SR-71 engines, um, and also with a larger wing. I have since shortened the wing. We know it can fly back reasonably well, so I don't think it's got to be too much of a problem with this wing. It's just going to have a really high uh, takeoff speed. So let's see. I've uh, filled it up with uh, 53,000 liters of liquid methane. No oxygen. We don't need that for the flyback. I've left the food, water, and oxygen in just in case. I, I don't think we really need the food, but just in case we uh, have a cockpit in or something like that. Uh, I, I don't remember if I accounted for the mass of that, so we'll just put an asterisk on that. Uh, you'll note launch clamps, and that's uh, because on the runway sometimes it hops a around a lot, so we need to be careful. And of course we are going to be taking off from Cape Canaveral on the shuttle runway. Incidentally, this engine was really fancy. It would run on the liquefied natural ga gas, LNG, uh, but it could actually switch to kerosene in flight in five seconds. So if it had to fly to an airport that didn't have liquefied natural gas, 
it could just go ahead and switch to kerosene. And yeah, so that's a fancy feature. I wonder if there's any downsides. I don't know if we have this thing fully documented. We just know it existed and was tested. So uh, anyway, I would like to know more about it. We do not have the right staging right now. Okay. This is an advanced jet engine-ish kind of thing, but I don't have all the numbers for it. I based it on the AL-31 turbofan to some extent. Which was already in advanced jet engines. Well, we're not accelerating super fast, are we? It says 2 hours and 41 minutes. Now, it's a long trip. Uh, we're probably not going to be exceeding Mach 1 with this. <laughs> with the acceleration we have now, definitely not. Um, so we're expecting airliner speeds going from Cape Canaveral to Boca Chica or Brownsville. But can we get anywhere? Or do we have to have four jet engines? Of course I don't want to have four of them because that's more mass. And I would like maybe to carry these during a normal mission even when you have payload. Uh, so that you know, we might need some better heat shielding on it. It might be worthwhile to make a custom model of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a thought. You notice I haven't even thought about rotating yet. <laughs> I know uh, we probably need to be very close to 90 meters per second. We're running out of runway, though, so it's got to be rough. Ooh, we had a hop. It's got to be tough, and we need to not scrape off the body flaps. I'll just wait. Okay. Let's start rotating. Then we have to be super gentle about this. Ah, uh, uh, we're still hitting ground. Uh, oh no, we lost those. Okay, well, that's gonna make it harder. The balance is difficult. We're climbing. And may maybe we need like NK89Ms that are just a little bit more thrust. <laughs> would perhaps be ideal. Um, we're gonna probably start going down soon if I don't point at that. But we gotta go down anyway. It's... it's... not likely to survive right now. This is really... Uh, if it only had just a little bit more it might be able to do this. But it's not. Uh, yeah, we're not gaining speed fast enough. I was not intending to use flaps, and the reason for that, well, see, we're 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 eventually gonna stall out if I try and pull up here. So it's not like it matters much. We're we're already stalled, really. Oh, uh, these are th vectoring engines, though. That's a little bit cheaty. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're doomed. Well, I'll let you see the splashdown and its net effects. I'll have to turn the gimbal off. I don't think the engines had the gimbal. Oh, 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 yeah. Funny physics when you... Oh, okay, yeah. All right. So, I think we need more unless we want to upgrade the engines. I'll put the con configuration for the engines in the video description. You'll need advanced jet engines for it, though. But I think it'll work if you use them. Okay, well, I I'm thinking I might want upgraded versions, but maybe we'll double it up for now, just to see that everything else works. Can we double it up? Can we have that much mass in the back, right? There's that question. The TU-155 had three of these anyway. Uh, well, it only carried one, but it had three equivalent engines, I should say. So, only putting two is really underdoing it for this particular plane. Okay, these we'll just have to put it further in the back, otherwise they'll hit things. I don't know why they creep up on me, but they go closer to the engine pods when we're outside. And... well, we better get going before we hit the clamps there. Oop. Come on, come on. The resource display doesn't want to stay up. All right. Well, now we have less stage time, obviously. We've doubled the engines. 
We'll have to see how it works out for us. Yeah, the flaps would create more drag and we wouldn't get off the ground as quickly, but maybe if we use flaps now it would be okay considering our acceleration. We're probably looking at a safe liftoff speed. It's a little bit squirrely right now though. We need to get off the ground soon so that we don't wiggle around all over the place. Let's try and rotate without hitting those body flaps. Okay. A little bit weird. I didn't keep the center line or anything. But we are off. I mean, you'd hope that with double the thrust we'd be okay. But you can see how fast it needs to go in order to get off the ground. Which makes sense for the wing area and all. It is mostly empty right now, of course. We have no oxygen. It's practically empty. It's just a flying fuel tank with a little bit of methane in. But we need to get up to altitude and then see what the duration is and where it is enough. After all, if we load more methane in, if it turns out we need more fuel to get back, then we have to reassess whether we can get off the ground uh, or fly properly. If it can do it with this amount of fuel, then it's okay. We are probably also pushing it as far as how well the wheels can take it and all that business. But it should be doable at this speed. At the speed that we took off at. Well, we're going faster than the 250 knots we're supposed to at below 10,000 feet, but I hope they'll forgive us. Oh, the vectoring engines, though. <laughs> Again, we're, we're cheating somewhat. Let's just turn those off, huh? I'll have to delete the gimbling in the configuration. Again, because I copied the AL31 turbofan, which is vectoring. Probably got a little bit more oomph than I want. For the purposes of this vehicle, I might pause it uh, uprated and somewhat physically larger. And of course, I'll increase the fuel consumption uh, version of the NK89. The hydrogen version is the NK88, by the way. But uh, I haven't made a configuration for that yet. I'll need a test bed, if you will, to make sure that that seems proper. Well, I'm gonna accelerate a bit here to ease the climb. And actually throttle back, too. Let me see. No, that cuts down some fuel consumption. I mean, most I mean, takeoff and climb involves a lot of fuel consumption, so I'm not too worried right now. But let me get an actual distance between our two locations. I'm gonna Google map this. It seems like 1,000 regular miles, 1,022 regular miles. So we'll just say 1,000. Well, I need to convert to kilometers, don't I? <laughs> I was gonna go with nautical miles, but apparently, yeah, we need kilometers. Then we should have some reserve or whatever, but... 1,644 kilometers. So, let's say we're going airlinerish speeds, which will... Which will get us maybe 270 meters per second. Let's say 250 meters per second just to be conservative. So 250 meters per second. So I get the number of seconds. Actually, it's not that long a flight. And we're looking at uh, two hours tops, 1.827 hours. But we'll say two hours. We've given ourselves buffer in a number of directions. So basically, we're looking for a two hour stage time going at 250 meters per second. Okay, we've reached our cruising speed, but not cruising altitude. Well, we could probably increase our speed somewhat, too. I'll let it climb up a bit, but we're gonna just sort of nudge up slowly at this rate. It is a big lug with not a lot of lift, so it's still holding an angle of attack at this speed. But we clearly don't have much stage time here, so... 
Let's see if I can coax it up and get it to a good situation or whether we need more fuel. Well, I am using physical time warp to get through this. We are over here right now. I don't intend to complete the whole flight, but it's uh, right now it's looking like we need more fuel. But I want to get a more definitive sense on how much. The wing area sure didn't make the climb easy, I'll tell you that. I've left some afterburning on just for show, but of course it was a turbo fan that didn't have afterburning. Uh, again, uh, artifact of having used the AL-31 as, uh, as a reference point. Well, uh, we're at 8.4 kilometers and I'm just not gonna coax it up any higher like this. So yeah, pretty, pretty stable right now. Mach 0.56, let's call it. Uh, Mach 0.86, let's call it. And more or less stable, but we only have 27 minutes of fuel left. We'll probably get around... Well, we'll see where we get, actually. Let me just go ahead and take advantage of the time warp and we'll see where we get. But my guess is we're going to need double the fuel load just to be safe. We could probably get away with less than that, but that would require a full test to the landing point. It can do it, but it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not an easy plane to get up to cruising height and speed. Okay, I think I've run it enough. We have about five minutes left. We are here. We certainly have the room for the propellant for the liquid methane because of course there's a huge liquid methane stage. We just need to increase it a little bit and hope we can take off. Uh, the amount that we're increasing it by is 23 tons, so it's not trivial. Well, now we have 2 hours and 41 minutes of stage time. But, yeah, I do think, and let's just get rid of the gimbling here. I do think that just having upgraded versions of these might be the best thing to do instead of having four. But is it just gonna barely take off? We have some runway remaining and we're almost at 100 meters per second. Well, oh, okay. That's our limit. Come on. Pull up. Uh, oh, oh no, we lost them. Oh, let's just... Let's just redo that. We lost the body flaps. Okay, it might need more speed than that. It was going okay, but then we scraped the tail, so... Okay... Oh, I forgot to turn off the gimbling again. Oh well, I guess it'll help. Maybe. Oh, no. Okay, okay, we're gonna have to go for higher speed. Let me turn off the gimbling right away. Just so it doesn't confuse things. This might be too heavy again. I mean, if we want to take off in a reasonable amount of speed. Uh oh, we hopped. Uh, okay, I didn't want to hop. Okay, 120 maybe? Be moderate. Uh, come on, you have to pull up. Okay, we're off without scraping the body flaps, but it's really, really hard. It's feeling a little bit nose heavy, weirdly. Um, did I have the... Oh, I didn't have the fly-by-wire on, that's why. I should take off about the fly-by-wire. That's nice and everything. Okay, we are reaching the west coast of Florida. It's substantially harder for this thing to climb at this point. Uh, as you might expect, we are approaching Mach 0.8. And we would like to get a little bit higher. I'll try and climb it a little bit more here now that we've accelerated. And We'll dump some speed in order to get altitude. We've still got two hours here and, you know, 
that's pretty good as far as uh, getting over there is concerned. Two hours will be fine, really, if we we're going 250 meters per second. That is what we calculated. So, yeah, it's just a matter of it'll be more efficient to go up a little higher and then we'll have more reserve. But it, it looks like this is the kind of fuel we need to carry, in which case we're getting off the runway at a really high speed, though. That's not wonderful. Uh, these engines aren't exactly the most efficient engines in the world. Uh, they are not high bypass turbofans. They were made in uh, 1989, so the specific fuel consumption, I think uh, more modern jet engines or turbofan engines would be better. Whether we want a full turbofan with a high bypass on here, I doubt. Of course, that would cause more drag and complications during the whole re-entry business. It's better to heat shield these, you know, a, a smaller, lower bypass turbofan than trying to heat shield a higher bypass turbofan. So we have to take that into consideration. Probably we're going to be stuck with a uh, lower efficiency engine one way or another. This time as we climb though, we're just running it at full throttle all the way. We can't really back down on that. Well, the most important thing for viewers, I suppose, is that the configuration works. So you can take it and plop it into your game data folder. I'll link it in the video description. And you could use these. But obviously some tweaks need to be made. The engine is not meant to have an afterburner. It's just meant to be a normal turbo fan. The thrust is right. It's just that as the afterburner effect. That's a whole separate thing. And that's because it's derived from uh, the other engine and at sea level would be 103 kilonewtons obviously higher up it's less but we get less drag so it's okay and you can see it stats there but yeah otherwise I think we'll make it this time we are at past the requisite speed we're at a good sort of cruising speed cruising altitude is a little bit low but it's sort of stable 1 hour and 46 minutes will do fine for a trip uh, given my calculations so yeah uh, considering especially the amount of distance we've covered already so I'm not gonna spend the rest of the time otherwise it's gonna take 40 minutes more to do this flight uh, I might leave it be but I'm not gonna record it so anyway I think we've got a configuration but I'll probably want to customize the engines a little bit I may make a, might make a custom model especially to add a sort of heat shielding element to it if we wanted to carry the engines up. I don't know if we want to or whether we assume that they're going to sort of connect the engines up for the flight back. I, I guess sort of leaving the engines off during the mission to launch the payload but then at Cape Canaveral attaching the engines would be best-ish but then you'd have to transport the engines from uh, Brownsville to Cape Canaveral somehow too. Uh, you'll have to put them on a truck or something every time. So that's not the most elegant way of going about it. Probably the best way would be to have it on there, but then it'll cut down. Obviously, it'll cut down on the payload capacity. At least we don't have to have a separate kerosene tank, though. So that's a plus. But anyway, there we have it. Our attempt to uh, ferry the Orion carry plane, which I need a new name for. Uh, I need a new name for it so that people don't associate it too much with the Orion spacecraft that NASA has. It is, of course, named in regard to the 2001 Space Odyssey and the Orion 3 plane, uh, space plane, so, but maybe a unique name should be devised here. We're using some pitch authority, by the way, just to hold on here, but, yeah, so that's, that's a thing that we might need to think about. I have internal names for everything, but they're not particularly good. The internal name for this is based on a number, 773, and the Japanese equivalent of that, Nanami. Uh, so that's just the internal name. But then my internal name for the Shinkansen was originally Hamster. <laughs> so yeah, that's the that's the Blender file it was saved as. And so whenever I open the Shinkansen space plane, the file I have to open is called Hamster. So I I don't think too deeply about these na internal names. So anyway, if you've got a good name for the Orion carrier plane in particular, not the Orion three, the Orion three will stay Orion three. But the Orion carrier plane in particular, I'll, I'll 
entertain suggestions on that. But anyway, for now, with this test being reasonably complete, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.